Hello and welcome to another video. Today we are talking about the five things that I love most about Tress and the Emerald Sea. Number six, it's a bonus. I, I had to add this in because just the moment I heard what the title was, I was one of those people that didn't care about getting them spoiled. I fell in love. Tress and the Emerald Sea is just a beautiful title. The cover goes perfectly with it. It just adds to the beauty and the illustrations throughout the book are absolutely brilliant. Number five, so often in books, our main characters are kind of the owner of their world. They know what's going on. It might not always be right, but to them it is. And the thing that I really loved about Tress was that she admitted that she didn't have a clue what she was doing almost the majority of the time and she was still willing to just jump in and go for it. That aspect of her personality was extremely endearing and very refreshing. Number four, Hoyd, who narrates this story, is famous for being a world hopper, for jumping back and forth between Brandon Sanderson's world. The thing about Tress and the Emerald Sea, though, is that there are world hoppers everywhere. I have a theory that Tress's entire crew are world hoppers, and if they're not at the moment of Tress and the Emerald Sea, because obviously Tress isn't, they will be sometime in the future. Just a theory, I have nothing to back it up, but I like it, so I'm sticking with it. Number three, I don't know about you guys, but I rarely read the foreword or the afterword of a book, um, with the exception of like if it's an index to help you pronounce words, or like Brandon Sanderson has the, sorry about the pronunciation, Ars Arcanum maybe is how you pronounce it, in the back of his stories that is helpful to understand what's going on in the story. Tress in the Emerald Sea had a afterword that kind of explained where that story came from. Somehow it like leveled up the story for me. Specifically one section stood out to me that actually got me pretty emotional. I wanted something that was just for me and for my wife. Something I could share with her and not worry about deadlines or expectations. I just wanted to write free of business constraints or fan expectations to see where the story took me, build something like I did long ago in the days before I had quite so many constraints. I think a part of me felt sorry for Brandon Sanderson because he writes so much and I can just imagine that it was really freeing to write this story and have no expectation of a reader seeing it. And I can only imagine how intense reader expectations can be now that he has this giant shared universe that we're all obsessed with. Number two, Brandon Sanderson is known for his magic systems and although often they have a more science kind of feel to them, they do still feel like magic. However, in Tress and the Emerald Sea, the magic system to me felt like just straight science. Tress's ability to use magic had nothing to do with herself. She didn't have to say oh to become a superhero. She wasn't born with some inept ability. She just learned science and used what she learned to be successful. And that was really refreshing from a Brandon Sanderson novel. Number one, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I absolutely loved Elantris. Elantris, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I loved it. I haven't talked about this yet on the channel, but I also loved 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 the emperor's soul my point is is that we got more elantris ah oh, the final boss being elantrian was so sweet i just i am craving more cell i think is the world that elantris and the emperor's soul take place on thank you thank you thank you for bringing elantris back into the mix that's all i've got for you guys today if you enjoyed this video hit that like button let me know down in the comments what you guys thought about Tress and the Emerald Sea. And look out for part two, five things that I hated about Tress and the Emerald Sea. If you enjoyed the more whimsical nature of Tress and the Emerald Sea, check out this video right here for something similar.